Upper Echelon is brought to you by Deloitte for innovative thinking and thorough strategic planning. Turn to Deloitte. Theo Rutstein is the executive chairman of the Teljoy Group, a business that he's been running, well, most recently since 2001, but in fact, a company that he started way back in 1968. You've done so much in your career over the last 40-odd years, Theo, but back in 1968, when you started there, did you, did you know this was going to be it? This was going to be the company that you'd be working at still went into your 70s? I don't think I ever gave it a thought, Alec. It was what I was doing at the time. And uh, over years, in many instances, it was a question of survival. So I don't think I thought too far into the future. I knew what I wanted to do then. That is what I wanted to do. And things evolved from that point. You know, we're not quite the same company that we were in 1968-69. We've been through many uh, reincarnations. We've reinvented ourselves a few times. And uh, I'm happy to be where I am anyway. But you've had a fascinating career. And in this era of serial entrepreneurs and people who kind of hit one idea and then rush off to the next one, you've, you've had a few big ideas that you've followed through consistently, maybe starting with, with the whole television rental side, then into cell phones. And now solar power seems to be the big thing, which we'll talk about a bit later. But you've also had some ups and downs during that time. Did you ever want to throw in the towel? No, I don't think I ever wanted to throw in the towel. I just wanted to overcome problems and find the way of doing it. So I guess uh, I've learned more by mistakes than the things I got right. And uh, hopefully we don't repeat the mistakes too many times, although I've done that too. And I think it's just a question of being positive and, and moving forward. You're also a property developer. I was. You were. <laughs> Not too many people know that you actually developed the whole of Voter World. And was that, was that by accident or design? No, it was by design. It was in a period when I was out of Telgio for a short time and uh, looking for an opportunity to decide what to do. And that seemed like a very good idea at the time. And uh, fortunately, Eleanor Craig, who is a really good friend of mine, and we've been through many in, uh, instances together, uh, thought that was a good idea, so we did that. But in fact, before I became involved in Teljoy in 1968-69, I was a property developer. We had a township development company that was one of the very few so that uh, survived the era of Corlett Drive uh, Estates and Glen Annell and all of those. So property development wasn't new to me. It was that I was at an end at that time trying to decide what to do, and this seemed like a good idea. Interesting you mentioned that. I remember having a discussion with Donald Gordon, the founder of Liberty Life, who said, had he discovered property before insurance, he wouldn't have gone into insurance. Perhaps I should have stayed in property. <laughs> it, it was it clearly it was a successful development, but was that? Did you ever have that feeling, or is 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 the rough and tumble of uh, retail businesses where you've been been focused just more exciting to you? Yes, you know, property is exciting, I guess, but uh, once the development is done, it's done. And uh, my orientation is far more around people, what people want, where the opportunities might do, and inter interrelating with people. Uh, and of course you do that in property development, but it tends to be just the same group of people. People, It's not retail. It's almost like property development, it's, it's about the money, whereas in other businesses it's about building. Well, property development uh, is about money. It's also about gearing, and uh, usually you're borrowing a lot of money. Uh, that tends to uh, vary according to the rates of interest from time to time. So I guess it is. It's about lots of things. I guess my orientation just felt more comfortable in retail, and that's why I moved away from uh, property. We were in the property industry at the time that I started Teljoy, and that is where the money initially came from to uh, put into Teljoy and, and evolve and develop it. Uh, but once we got, and in fact I stayed with property for quite a long time, it was only when we decided to list Teljoy that it wasn't feasible to be involved in too many other things and I changed my direction and decided to move out of property at that stage and concentrate on developing the new business, which was far more exciting. That also brought you your biggest challenge, 1996, when uh, you resigned, Teljoy produced some enormous losses. The company that you started, almost a bit like Steve Jobs, I suppose, in a way, uh, to have to leave that must have been pretty difficult. I'm a million miles away from Steve Jobs, but yes, uh, the, the reality was it was, Alec, and the mistake there was growing too fast. You know, when we uh, became involved in Teljoy, 
a rental company, I kind of looked at the market and said, okay, we need to take every opportunity because every deal we miss now is lost for at least five years. That would be the perceived life of a television set. When we moved into cellular, I kind of looked at it the same way. And we decided to really get into the business and chase it. It didn't seem to me a model that you could leave to other people. We needed to capture the market, and we found very interesting ways of doing that, prime amongst which was subsidizing the phone. That was my idea, evolved with Alan, not Craig, and he really supported it, and really not supported by many other people because they felt that it, would, it wasn't the way to go. It wasn't perceived to be a general use product, the cell phone at that time. I took the example from a rental business, though, and said, look, this is not about getting the product. Let's look at it financed over a two-year period, which is the start of the two-year contract, and what we really wanted was airtime use. Initially, it was very exciting because where we thought that the total market would be 400,000 units for the entire market over four years, of which Telger might get 40,000, we had 60,000 within about six months. And we certainly didn't have the technology to support everything that we were doing. We were processing something like 2 million minutes a day. Uh, I didn't realize that we were growing as well. I knew how fast we were growing. I didn't realize the problems that would come with it. So there came that time where it was necessary to take the foot off the accelerator, put the foot on the brake. That basically wasn't my orientation. And I'm definitely, at that stage particularly, was not systems driven understood that we needed something something else. So it came to looking at this thing and saying, okay, from a shareholder perspective, prime amongst which is myself, what would be the best for Telljoy? And the best was that I step away from it at that time. So yes, painful, uh, but the right choice. And of course the opportunity has come back. Indeed it did. It wasn't long before you were back and taking a management part, or Telljoy got sold to Vodacom, you came back and and picked up the old business. Was it always a, a desire to go back to that business rather than uh, start another one or get involved with a different one? Not really, Alec. It was opportunistic. What really happened is that the business had been bought then by Vodacom. They'd integrated the cellular division into their cellular business, which became Vodacom Service Provider, uh, which was the right thing to do. We always knew that that business would always be, the service providers would always be absorbed and would not be self-standing forever and then Alan found himself uh, with this business that he wasn't quite sure what to do so he asked me to come back and help him sort out some serious problems that they were having at that time and fortunately I was able to do that then came the opportunity to buy it back and re-establish a cellular entity within that business which we did and in fact that uh, we sold back to Vodacom again and uh, decided when Venfin pulled out of the cellular business, we thought maybe the market was quite mature and we'd move into other things. So the core business remains the same. We've extended it. In fact, one of the divisions that we do is exactly what we're doing now. We provide video conferencing facilities, uh, which are quite good. And uh, we're expanding and looking for the new arena that pr provides opportunities. As uh, often has happened to me, I tend to get into things a little early. And sometimes when you're a pioneer, you take pain. Uh, but, you know, I guess when you roll with the punches, you, you do what you have to do uh, when it comes through them, hopefully. <laughs> you know, in amongst all of that, while you were busy with Vodacom, you got involved with Jasco. I yes. remember talking to you uh, on the radio numerous occasions and Jasco's ups and downs. Was that a, was that a happy um, diversion for you or was it going to be something that, was going to be, that you were expecting to be a long-term focus? Alec, I was, never I was involved in JASCO as a shareholder and a non-executive uh, chairman. So I didn't have a day-to-day -day involvement in the company. It was a very interesting company. It was uh, exciting to be in there. There were technologies that were involved. Uh, but it became necessary and desirable, in fact, to uh, have proper uh, empowerment. And we were able to put together a deal together with Dr. Anna Mahokong and Joe Matungandaba and that was my spell as a non-executive uh, chairman. Are you still invested there? I am. So you're quite happy that it's a, it's a kind of company for the future? Am I happy with my investment? No, I'd love to see it doing a lot better <laughs> than it is. 
Uh, that's why I said the future. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that future is taking a long time to materialise. But it, it happens with that, doesn't it? Often you've, you've gone into industries like with television. You were years ahead of television coming to South Africa. Cell phones not that far ahead. And, and now solar energy or, or solar heating. Yes. What's, uh, what's your time frame on that one? Longer than I thought. <laughs> Alec, uh, the... You know, the, the, the market hasn't taken off in the way that we expected, and uh, in some measure, from my perspective, that's rather good. Because when we went into the business, uh, we selected a product that uh, was based out of Brazil, we chose it, and we'd really evolved the market in South Africa. It was really building quite quickly, because our model was, we will deduct the ESCOM rebate up front, we'll take the risk on it, and we will fund the balance so that essentially with no deposit and uh, monthly payments which would generally be less than the savings that you're effecting on the ESCOM bill, you'd own this uh, product within four years and thereafter you'd have it relatively free. And that worked. So when we started to promote it, it started to move. And we were the only ones that were in the industry that were really making signi significant headway. Unfortunately, the product that we selected was not the most appropriate for South Africa or particularly Gauteng. It's a good product. It was deemed to be the most efficient, lightweight and aesthetically uh, pleasing, which is why we chose it. It went through the SABS testing, which established that it was good for minus 20 degree temperatures and would not freeze. And so we happily went ahead and did these installations. Unfortunately, you know, everybody says we've had a really cold winter. And I keep telling them that last winter was actually colder, maybe not as long, but colder. And during that period of the black frost, uh, we had a large number of our panels that burst, and we needed to replace them. Initially, we went to show what the problem was, but as soon as we realized that it was product deficiency, Despite all the testing, despite the approvals of both the SABS and ESCOM, it became our obligation. So what we did then is we took them all back, we replaced all of them, and as a measure of goodwill, we actually gave the customers back. It took us a month to do the replacement, so we gave them the 400-odd rand that uh, they wish would have saved had the system been working during the period that it uh, needed to be replaced. Sure, that's a different way of doing business, but it's a long-term approach. Alec, you know, that's our philosophy. It's taken a long time to build a reputation um, uh, for the company. And we kind of feel that part of building a reputation is that it costs money. If you have to take the blow on the chin, then that's what you've got to do, unpleasant though it may be. Yeah, just to close off with, you, you, are, you come from a very strong business family, if I can put it that way. Your uncle, Sol Kersner. Um, the, I see you, you, you serve with uh, a project called the Lalela Project, which the Kersner girls seem to be uh, involved in. Is, do you think that it, it's in the genes business? Yes. I think it's part of it and an important part of that. And people who are in business, whether they actually are driving a business or whether are in a corporate environment, really need to talk at the dinner table about what they do and about what business is. I grew up in a family where around the dinner table, and in those days people used to sit around the dinner table at the same time, uh, instead of, there was no technology really, but listening to what was talking, uh, you know, people were talking about, what my parents were talking about. Uh, I was astounded when I came to university to start the BCom degree, that, you know, turnover was a new term to some people, and understanding gross profit and understanding the way things were, they were starting out at university level trying to begin to understand this, whereas within me this was just totally ingrained. I understood it. And I think that that is so important. You know, one talks about entrepreneurship, but it starts off when you're really young, uh, getting out there. And the people that I know that have done well are the guys who were trading. They had to. They went out there and they did what they needed uh, to do to make the extra money that they needed to, to get what they wanted to do. Yeah, Ratstein, one of South Africa's great entrepreneurs and the executive chairman of the Teljoy Group. Upper Echelon was brought to you by Deloitte for innovative thinking and thorough strategic planning turned to Deloitte.